What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. Last time we talked about the general GRE, but this is a physics channel. So it's time to talk about the physics GRE. So what is the physics GRE? Well, much like the general GRE, the physics GRE is another standardized test that graduate programs uh, ask you to take when you're applying to their programs. Whether you're in physics or astronomy, you have to submit the physics GRE. So what's the structure of the physics GRE? Well, it's a 100 question multiple choice exam that's broken up into 20 questions on classical mechanics, 18 questions on electricity and magnetism, 9 questions on optics, 10 questions on thermo and stat mech, 12 questions on quantum mechanics, 10 questions on atomic physics, 6 questions on special relativity, 6 questions on lab methods, stuff like error analysis, lasers, uh, optical equipment, statistics, stuff like that, and then finally 9 questions on special topics, which include nuclear physics, particle physics, astronomy, cosmology, and condensed matter. To answer these 100 questions, you have 2 hours and 50 minutes uh, with no equation sheet and only a list of constants and quantities. The material on the exam basically covers everything you take in undergrad uh, from the core courses like classical mechanics, ENM, stat mech, and quantum, uh, but a lot of the questions are mainly from your introductory physics courses. So if you haven't taken Lagrangian or Hamiltonian mechanics yet, not to worry because uh, barely a few questions out of the hundred are on Lagrangian or Hamiltonian mechanics. So now how do we actually study for the physics GRE? Well, there's one answer. Conquering the physics GRE. And I can end the video here, but I won't. But more seriously, if you want to study for the physics GRE, you must have a study plan, which, as usual, you must start early. So what kind of study plan am I talking about? If you go down to the description, I have a link there to a website by the University of Washington's Physics Department where they have a 16-week study plan that starts off by taking the oldest release practice test, and then they take you week by week through the uh, subjects in physics, like classical mechanics and how to review those, and then each... Uh, a uh, few weeks, you take another practice exam, and then it keeps going like that for 16 weeks, guiding you through the process. Of course, it doesn't have to be 16 weeks. I mean, if you have more time, then you can take longer. Uh, but if you're confident in some of the subjects, you can make that time shorter, and you can skip some of the weeks. Now, if you follow that plan, you'll start with taking a practice test from, I think, 1986. Uh, the key here is to take the practice test under test conditions. So sit down for two hours and 15 minutes and take the test and then uh, score yourself and see how well you do. Don't feel too bad uh, when you take this test. They do get easier with time. So the 1986 one I felt was the hardest. So uh, if you don't do well on that, don't lose hope yet. It's still week one. Okay, you've taken the practice test and now you're in week two. You want to learn some classical mechanics or review some classical mechanics. How do you actually go about doing that? Well, there are basically two ways that you can study for a subject. The first is using Conquering the Physics GRE book, and the second is to use the classic textbooks uh, for that subject. So the approach I took was to go through uh, the book, Conquering the Physics GRE. It's very comprehensive. It covers pretty much everything that you need to know for the physics GRE. It has practice problems, and it has some uh, practice tests at the end of the book. So if I'm studying classical mechanics, I just read the chapter on classical mechanics, and then I do the problems there, and then I move on. What's also nice about the Conquering book is that it covers things that you may have not learned in undergrad yet. So when I took the physics GRE, I had not learned the second semester of ENM, I had not taken the second semester of quantum, uh, I had not taken the second semester of classical mechanics, or I was still taking it at that time. So the physics GRE really, uh, or the Conquering book really helped me learn these new concepts that I had not yet learned in class. The other way of studying for a subject is to go back to the standard textbook uh, of that subject. So for example, if you're studying classical mechanics, you can go back to Taylor or whichever book you used in undergrad and then do some problems. One star problems are probably closest to the physics GRE. Uh, likewise, if you're doing studying e &M, uh, then you can go to Griffiths, study e &M, do some problems. Uh, likewise with quantum mechanics, go to Griffiths. And then finally with stat mech or thermodynamics, you can use Schroeder or pretty much any standard textbook. Here are some quick tips for when you're taking the exam. First, Remember that every question is equal to every other question. That means if you find a hard question, just skip it. Don't bother thinking too much about a question. Just go through the exam, skip hard questions, and then once you're done with the easy ones and the ones that you're confident with, 
then go back from the beginning and then do the ones you left. Second, knowing trivia helps. So if you watch a lot of PBS FaceTime or some other physics YouTube channels, uh, sometimes knowing some physics trivia helps because you might be asked about some particle physics or nuclear physics that are just uh, statements of facts. So like a neutrino interacts so-and-so and you have to figure out how it interacts. So if you already know this, some trivia, then you'll get free points. And lastly, answer every single question. So in previous years, you used to get penalized if you get the wrong answer on a question, but now uh, in today's exam, you're no longer penalized. So answer every single question, even if you're guessing. So once you're done with the exam and there are some questions that you just didn't know, uh, go back to those and make sure you answer with your best guess before you give up your exam. Now, how did I actually study for the physics theory? Well, first I started Googling around and I found out that most people are recommending this Conquering the Physics Theory book. So I got that book and then I found out about this website by the University of Washington and I said to myself, you know, this plan looks really nice. Maybe I'll follow it and see if it really helps. And I decided to uh, set some three hours every Friday just to study for the physics GRE. So every Friday comes, I finish my classes early in the morning, and then I just sit for three hours studying for the physics GRE or taking a practice test. So I started with week one, I took the practice test. Then week two, I started studying for classical mechanics, uh, basically using the Conquering the Physics GRE book. I would go through it, uh, make sure I understand all the concepts and then do the problems in the book. And then if I notice that I'm doing well in one subject, I just go faster, skip to the next. And that way I can do it in less than 16 weeks because I didn't have that much time. And when I started studying for the physics GRE, I took the 1986 practice test and I got a 760, which was good, but it wasn't really that good. I was aiming for a 900. Uh, so I said, okay, that's fine. I'll study and I'll see how I can start climbing up to that 900. So then I started studying more and then I took more and more practice tests. I could breach the 800 level, but then at some point I went back down to 700 and something and uh, didn't really feel that nice uh, to go back down. But then towards the end, I took the 2008 practice test, I think, and then I did really well on that. And that really boosted my confidence. I got, I think like an 890 on it. Uh, and so then when I actually took the exam at the end, I was able to break that 900 level and I got a 910. Now, if you're not familiar with the physics GRE, these scores might not mean much to you, but basically what you need to know is that a 990 is a top score, and then uh, everything else is basically compared to that score based on the percentiles, and I'll link the uh, most recent physics GRE percentile conversion between your, your raw score and your percentile. So a big question everyone asks, and I was one of those people uh, when I was an undergrad, is what's a really good score? What should I aim for? And from my experience, if you want to do theory, you should aim for 900 and above. Uh, I heard that from multiple people in multiple universities. They always told me, if you want to do theory, get that 900 or above. Now, if you're going to experiment, uh, the situation is slightly different. I don't think they put a lot of weight on the physics GRE the same way theorists do, uh, but I think they still expect you to get a good score depending on the university. So make sure you check what the cutoff score is or the average score of the university you're applying to and make sure you get above that. Now that's not to say that if you get below a 900, you should be discouraged from applying to theory, not at all, but uh, it does help your case. Now let's say you took the exam, but you didn't score uh, that hot, you didn't get the score you wanted. Uh, is that it? Uh, is it over for you? Well, not at all, because there are some schools that actually don't require the physics GRE and some of them make it optional. And this year due to the pandemic, uh, some of the schools that actually require it previously are not requiring it. So make sure you uh, hunt those schools down. I'll actually put a link in the description that takes you to uh, a Google Doc that has the list of all the universities that do and don't require it. And hopefully that will be a useful resource. Okay, so now it's time for some meta GRE where we're gonna be asking questions about the physics GRE itself. First of all, why the physics GRE? Why is it 100 questions that are multiple choice two hours and 50 exams. Why that specific structure? I mean, in my undergrad, I barely saw any multiple choice questions uh, outside of physics one or physics two, uh, but those weren't actually courses for physics majors. They were physics for engineers. So in my actual physics cl classes like classical mechanics and electricity and magnetism, optics, electronics, quantum mechanics, all those classes, 
I barely saw any multiple choice questions. Now to be fair, I did learn a few things while studying for the physics theory, and sometimes the questions themselves taught me something, uh, but if I'm being honest, uh, the most I learned was actually how to do physics GRE problems than actual physics. So now I'm a, I'm a good physics GRE test taker, but I'm not really that much better as a physicist. Another question that I typically ask about these standardized tests is that they cost a lot of money. And it also costs money to send your test scores to uh, universities. So now you're paying for the GRE, you're paying for the physics GRE, you're paying for an application fee, uh, you're paying to send your scores. Uh, it's a lot of money for just one application. So if you look at it this way, the physics GRE might actually be a barrier for some people who are trying to get into physics. We can also ask about the astronomy majors who are forced to take the physics GRE when they're applying to astro programs, uh, when a lot of astro uh, is not really on the physics GRE. So is that fair to them? One last question we can ask about the physics GRE is what's its relationship with success in grad school? because usually success in grad school means you're a good researcher, uh, whereas doing well on the physics GRE usually means you do well on the physics GRE. Uh, so I would like to see uh, some studies on this. I, I found a couple of studies on Google Scholar, but um, it seems like this area has not been researched that heavily. Let me know in the comments what you think about the physics GRE. If you've taken it before, let us know what strategies you used. If you're taking it uh, in the future, let us know how you're gonna be studying for it. And as always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.